It's Crystal Beast time! For you fans of Sapphire Surprise, there will of course be more Sapphire. There will be more 10 negate boards and 40 step turns from 2 card combos. We are gonna fusion, synchro, exceeds, and link summon. We will activate Ancient City Rainbow Ruins, and we will continue to win tournaments with it. Activate the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! All right, now that I've got my props settled, this deck has been going head to head with everything in the meta. There's Labyrinth, Visas, Branded, Illusion, Fire King. My OTS record this season has been 15 wins, six losses. Not my best, but I'm tired. This will be a comprehensive guide on how I win with Crystal Beasts, the many nuances of this control deck, which can pivot into a grind, and just so many absurd techs you had no idea could be so fabulous. I had segments on Advanced Crystal Beasts, Smoke screening with the side deck, a Testina, and... Oh my gosh, the side deck is homophobic. Smoke screening with the side deck is a thing, and also a Testina engine, which claps snake eyes, but we don't have time for all of that. This is already a very long video. If you want to see how much weirder my decks can get, subscribe and I'll get around to it. I make new Yu-Gi-Oh's every month. Going first, my end goal is an unbreakable board using Apollo Usa to stop monster effects, Ancient City Rainbow Ruins to stop spells and traps, and World Sea Dragon Zealantis to stop attacks. Going second, you can just speed run to Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon Overdrive for 11,000 damage and a board wipe. Okay, really? You're gonna tell me Rainbow Dragon Overdrive is homophobic now? Alright, I fixed it. Yu-Gi-Oh has equal rights now, you're welcome. Or if your opponent thinks Droll and Shifter can skip your turn, you can simply spam some Crystal Dragons and push for lethal damage. If you want to build a Crystal Beast deck like mine, just throw in every fun card you see here. That's my number one pro tip. If your combo deck isn't going off, run more combo cards. Just all of them, all at once, and just play with it. That's the best way to find out what works for you. I'll start by just playing out a hand so you can see how this looks in action, and then I'll explain what the heck just went on. Alright, and we're gonna record it this time. So here we go. Uh, slightly weird hand, but I'm gonna go with it. Instant Fusion's gonna pop out Millennium Eyes Restrict, so that'll block things like Ash and Drawl. I'm gonna need a Crystal Beast here, so I'll use Awakening of the Crystal Ultimate. And, hey, why not just go directly to Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, which I can banish to search for a Crystal Beast in a field spell. So, I'm gonna grab myself Sapphire Pegasus and Ancient City Rainbow Ruins, which I am going to make work. I'll normal summon the Sapphire Pegasus, which can now crystallize Rainbow, and from the hand, I can now Synchro Summon Power Tool Dragon. Using Power Tool Dragon's effect, I can add one of three random equip spells from my deck, but they can be three of the same equip spell. So, hello, Golden Rule! I'm guaranteed to get one of them, but I'm gonna need something to summon with it. So, I'm gonna crack that rainbow to summon Ruby from the deck and search for another big rainbow dragon. So we've got this Ruby on the field now, but we have to get it off the field for golden rules. So, using Revolution Synchron's effect, I can send the top card of my deck to the graveyard, summon it out, and hey, now that's level 1, I can combine it with a 3 to make Herald of the Arclight. No interaction allowed! <laughs> Now I can use Golden Rule to place two crystals from the deck. I'm going to go with Sapphire and one of the level 3s. Special Summon Ruby, triggering Ruby's effect to immediately summon these two, triggering Sapphire again to place another crystal. Now at this point, I'm probably not going to need Millennium Eyes Restrict anymore, so I'm going to use that as one of the Link materials to make a big Saryuja Skull Dread, which will let me draw four cards and return three. So here are the four, we've got plenty of fun here, but I don't need these. Now I'll use Crystal Bond. Let's see, how many more crystals am I going to need here? I'm, I can place one more crystal with this sapphire, one more with Bond, one more with whatever. No, I can do this. Another sapphire to the hand, place the crystal in back. Using Skulldred's next effect, I can special summon sapphire from my hand, triggering its effect to place another crystal. One Link 4 monster can be used as the entire material for World Sea Dragon Zelantis, which banishes all monsters from the field and summons them back, triggering Sapphire Pegasus twice more. This completes our rainbow. I actually have too many crystals now, so uh, I'll just drop a Sapphire Pegasus. Now that I have at least four crystals, I can use a Ancient City Rainbow Ruins to draw a free card. I've got all seven crystals, so I can special summon Rainbow Dragon and hey, just 
link it away for a crow sheep, summon a new rainbow dragon, that can be tributed to make rainbow over dragon, which is purple, so that triggers crow sheep. Now I could special summon ruby and then special summon all the crystal beasts, but we got too many, so... Well, ruby isn't actually gonna do anything here. I'll pile these up into... Apollosa, Bow of the Goddess, for three monster negates. Use the fifth effect of Rainbow Ruins. I can move one of these up. I messed up. I should have placed a ruby there. Then I could have gotten two crystals. Oh, well. See, I messed up, and I'll use Rainbow Bridge of the Heart to destroy something and grab Crystal Miracle, which negates anything. So I've got two Omni negates, two Spell Trap negates, three monster negates. So that's a total of seven negates. Plus, this is co-linked, so during the battle phase, it can destroy two cards. This should have been eight negates, but I misplayed because I have had to record this so many times. All right, all the negates. Show this video to all of your friends who think crystal beasts do nothing. So now what the heck just happened? You may already be familiar with the simplest one phase overdrive combo. Use Crystal Bond and Sapphire to power up Crystal Beacon, whose Ruby Summon will awaken those crystals. Use two level 3s to make Carabini and dump the other level 3. Then the 4s make Dugaris the Timeless, which resummons Sapphire for another crystal. Place Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, which turns into the big Rainbow Dragon and your sixth Crystal Beast. Make World Sea Dragon Zealantis to resummon Sapphire again for your seventh crystal. Use those to make Crow Sheep, summon Rainbow Dragon, and tag it out for Rainbow Over Dragon. This will trigger Sheep Summon Effect, which will trigger Rubies again, and now you've got the Bow of the Goddess and it's time to go Overdrive. This two-card combo gets you 18,000 attack points and a board wipe backed up by three negates. You win! But I don't do that combo anymore. I don't even run Carabine. Golden Rule is so powerful that Konami broke a years-long import schedule to get to the TCG faster. Most people think Golden Rule made Turbo possible, but I can tell you that these end boards didn't require Golden Rule in the first place. This just added a huge boost in power and resiliency while also making the deck simpler to use, even for you rabble who don't have PhDs in dueling. That took me nine years in dual school, you know. So let's start building from here. Most commonly, Crystal Beast players will use Golden Roll to place two Sapphires from the deck, summon a Ruby to awaken them, getting a total of five Crystal Beasts. One of those can even be a Rainbow, which you can trade for another Crystal Beast and the big Rainbow Dragon. But this tempting play is almost always wrong. I will explain all the nuances as we go. This gets you to four monsters, but that includes an identical pair, so they can't be used to reach most four material Link summons. You could overlay the Sapphires for Dugaries, which can then resummon one of them and get you another crystal, but that puts you over five summons. Can you afford that risk? And are you sure you won't need this card later? Other players will forego the second sapphire and the extra crystal it places so that they will be able to shotgun Apollo as the fifth summon. But this is still wrong if you are planning on doing anything else with your turn because putting Apollo in the extra monster zone will prevent the combos we're doing next. Instead, go for Saryuja Skulldread as your fifth summon summon. That'll get you four draws, and in a deck with the most search power in the game, you are bound to draw something good. Bond, Bridge, Heart, Awakening, Good, Sapphire, any one of these will be enough to keep going, not to mention what combos you can assemble from the rest. If you can get to this point without using Golden Rule, then I encourage you to overextend. For example, summon Sapphire and use Heart to destroy it for a beacon. Use the beacon to summon Ruby and move these back up. Sapphire places another crystal. You can banish that, get another crystal beast. Because you've actually resummoned this sapphire, you have now hit five crystals, so a smart opponent is going to drop a rock on you as soon as you are able to reach Apollosa. If you have Golden Rule laying around, you can use that to now place a couple of crystals, get Ruby back, move these up. The sapphire will trigger again. You'll get another crystal. And now, thanks to the token you were given, you can still reach Sorry, you just Skull Dread. Draw four cards. You can also use Rainbow Bridge of the Heart to bounce that Primal, giving you another card back in your hand. You do have to return three cards for Saryuja, so being able to get cards back in your hand effectively means you get to keep extra draws. However you get to this point of summoning Dread, if you have five monsters, you'll be able to summon it without using Sapphire as a link material. Keeping Sapphire on the field is gonna get you a nice bonus later. Let's say we drew a Sapphire out of that and maybe nothing else relevant? Well, first you can use Skull Dread's second effect 
to special summon Sapphire from your hand, that gets you another crystal. Then tag it out for World Sea Dragon Zealantis, which banishes all monsters and resummons them. You can put your opponent's monsters in their worst positions, even face down, and every Sapphire you have on the field will trigger again. By this point, you definitely have all seven crystals, so the next step is to prepare to summon Rainbow Dragon. Rainbow Dragon can extend your swarms because it can tag out for Rainbow Over Dragon, which just for being a fusion, can trigger Crow Sheep's effect to special summon a monster from your graveyard. Summon Ruby, which in turn triggers its effect, to move all your Crystal Beasts up, and now you've got whatever materials you could ask for. But first, to make that sheep, you're going to need two different monsters. If you've been gathering crystals by spamming two sapphires, they won't be able to make the sheep on their own. Now, you could overlay them for Dugaris the Timeless, detach to resummon one of them, so you've swapped out a name, you've also triggered this to get another crystal, but you'll have to skip your next main phase one, so this might not be worth it unless you are setting up the lockdown with Rainbow Ruins and you won't mind skipping a phase. Or maybe instead of going for that second Sapphire, you just played a vanilla crystal and you get a little less resources. Think ahead about which route is best for the end board you're able to set up, or if you have Rainbow Dragon, that's the perfect Link material. Can you even see it? This was the first Ghost Rare ever made, so uh... It, it does not look good as their first attempt, but it's a little piece of history. Just don't use World Sea Dragon as Link material because we're going to need this again later. Here's a cutaway to a neat little combo that'll complete your rainbow and get you those sheep materials. Let's say you start by using Golden Rule and Ruby, so you get your Sapphire, your other crystal. Sapphire places rainbow, you can crack that, get another crystal beast, and search for the rainbow dragon. Then you combine all of these to get Saryuja Skull Dread. Let's say the only relevant card you get here is Crystal Bond. So we're going to use Crystal Bond to search for Ruby and Sapphire. Put Sapphire in the back and then special summon it using Saryuja Skull Dread, triggering its effect to move Sapphire up. Place another Sapphire from the graveyard. Then you can tag out Skull Dread to get World Sea Dragon Zealantis. Banish this and everyone else, they come right back. This triggers Ruby and Sapphire. Use Ruby as Chain Link 1, Sapphire Chain Link 2, so Sapphire will place a crystal, then Ruby will move them up and you get another crystal, then you can like Seize Summon, Dugaris the Timeless, Detach to summon someone back, Sapphire gets you Amethyst. You've got plenty of crystals now to do whatever you want. Okay, so whatever you do, you're gonna end up to a board looking like this. Trade two monsters for the sheep, summon Rainbow Dragon, tag it out for Over Dragon, triggering the sheep, reviving Ruby, and awakening your crystals. If you have a sapphire, that can also get you another one. From your newly refilled field, you can typically use Crow Sheep plus two or three other monsters to make Apollosa Bow of the Goddess. That'll have three or four negates on it. If you've got two leftover level fours, you can also go for an Abyss Dweller. If you can keep the World Sea Dragon in play through all of this, it'll now be co-linked to the Bow of the Goddess, so during the battle phase, it'll be able to destroy two cards. Just like my Golden Sword Soul combo, the best Sword Soul card, this prevents the opponent from attacking over Apollo, which used to be her main weakness. You can also do other things like if you hear those tragic words, end of battle phase, this could also destroy your own crystals so they don't get banished face down. If you do have to skip your next main phase and go straight to your next battle phase later on, this will be able to destroy two of the opponent's cards, which will help you keep them pinned down for that extra turn. Now, I did not play Rainbow Ruins in this example because one thing at a time. So many little calculations go into how to gather enough crystals to power up this thing's effects. This demands a big leap in skill. You will need to understand all the little nuances of this deck, so let's get to all the other things now. We'll come back to the city in the end. The first tech I want to highlight is Valence World, which is so heckin' good. It comes in two halves, activating one to the opponent's side of the field. There are lots of treacherous field spells these days, so by using this, you can take them out. Or if you're going first, this will disable popular counters, which require the player to control no cards. Most players don't notice this interaction, accidentally revealing that they have a card like Infinite Impermanence, and then you get to remind your opponent, you can't activate a trap card from your hand. The Japanese half is basically like a Crystal Promise, summoning a monster from the back row, except you are searching for it with one of your field searchers instead of one of your more valuable crystal searchers. You could use this to special summon a sapphire and build more resources, or 
you could use it to special summon Ruby and go for a swarm. If you're going second, the German half can take out an opposing monster, turning that into a crystal beast. And this provides a target for Rainbow Bridge of the Heart to bounce back into your hand, giving you two cards that can eat Saryuja's cost. So in total, you can get triple removal, double draws, a summon, and counter prevention all out of one searchable field spell. Nice! As an added bonus, these are very weird cards. Nobody knows how to play around these cards when suddenly every zone placement matters. And if your deck is full of weirdness like this, you ascend to total incomprehensibility! As your deck becomes weirder and the opponent becomes more confused, they will be less likely to figure out how to counter your strategy and more likely to misplay their own cards. Confusing the ever-living hell out of everyone is a legitimate way to win at Yu-Gi-Oh! Somehow less Less weird is Synchro Summoning from the Hand with Revolution Synchron. I am that one person who actually uses this baby to summon Power Tool Dragon. It searches the deck for one of three random equip spells, but they can be three copies of the same card, so hello golden rule. Once it's in the graveyard, Revolution Synchron becomes Glow Up Bulb. You can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard to summon it as a level 1 monster. Now you can summon Crystal Wing for your Crystal Beasts. Never again will a tragic nib keep me from making Day 2 at a YCS. <laughs> Or you could also combine it with Amber or Topaz to make Naturia Beast, negate all the opponent's spells. But we can go harder. The level 4 that you're Synchro Summoning with is most likely a Sapphire Pegasus that's going to leave a Rainbow Dragon behind, so you can crack that to get Ruby and search for the big rainbow, and you'll also get Golden Rule. So now you've got the Ruby to complement your Golden Rule. However, you do need to get the Ruby off the field, so you might have to link it away for some junk, and then you're not going to get to the Crystal Wing. Or, instead of a Crystal Synchro, you could combine these two cards to make a Rainbow Synchro with an even stronger negation effect and a Floodgate. So now you've got Golden Rule and Ruby, and you've got Herald of the Arclight to protect this swarm from anything. That's not even the end of these perfect synchro aesthetics, because if you don't need that Golden Rule search, the alternative level 7 is none other than Ancient Fairy Dragon. So now you can cycle through your many field spells, and you can special summon Ruby and Sapphire, triggering their effects for even more resources. So we've got a Crystal Synchro, a Rainbow Synchro, and as far as I'm aware, this is the only deck capable of using both Leo and Luna signer dragons together. But wait, there's still more! Also combining field spells with level 7 synchros is Dragon Ravine into Destrudo. Wow. So now your field searchers can also get you to Golden Rule. Salvation alone is going to get you Ravine and Ruby, which is going to get you to Power Tool Dragon and Golden Rule. You've got the full combo off of just Salvation. This also brings a discard cost, which can be used to move Junk Crystals and Salvation out of the hand. And one of the Crystal Beasts happens to be a dragon, so this is also a way to get a name into the graveyard. Or in a really bad hand, where you might have Golden Rule but no access to Crystal Beasts, Ravine can get you a Crystal Beast for Golden Rule to revive, and you can follow up with Beacon to go for a Swarm. Dragon Ravine gives you a few more ways out of bad hands, and that is always appreciated in a combo deck. But we can still go harder. A Crystal Beast player's worst nightmare is opening with Goods and Salvation, because now they're both bricks. In researching whether it was possible for Goods and Salvation to somehow unbrick themselves, I combed through every spell and trap card usable from the graveyard, which involves sending some other card from the hand or field to the graveyard, and I found my answer in the very same Advanced Crystal Beast packs, which also brought me the Borolode Savage Dragon you might remember from my Sapphire Surprise video. Clockwork! Knight. From the graveyard, it can be banished to discard from the hand and search for Revolution Synchron, and hey, a Crystal Beast and a Field Spell. Where other Crystal Beast players scoop, I go full combo backed up by Herald of the Arclight. But wait, we can still get weirder. Because in the time between Clockwork's release and Revolution's release, I had to comb through every other possible Earth Machine search target, so here's Magical Hound. This can summon itself by bouncing a face-up spell or trap from the opponent's field. Face-up spells and traps are rather potent these days. Get rid of them and get a free summon. If the opponent doesn't have a card because it's the first turn of the duel, give them one, and then after it's been rescued back into your hand, it can feed Saryuja. Magical Hound also provides a link material toward that Skull Dread, or it is a level 1 Earth Tuner, so you know what that means. There are times when I draw Clockwork Knight and I have no way to get rid of it, but even then, it has not been as bad as expected. 
I have used the attack boost to make OTKs, the attack reduction to survive them. I've used it to use a normal summon to attack over a boss monster, and then I can continue setting up in main phase two. Also, the type changing can mess with decks like Tri Brigade and Illusions. And it is just another weird card. Your opponents will fixate on its presence, yet still forget about its effects. This next card is more civil, I promise. Instant Fusion pops out Millenniumize Restrict, which will block Ash Blossom and Droll. It also provides another way to improvise a combo, because as a fusion, it can trigger Crow Sheep, summon Ruby, move up your crystals, scrounge up some Link materials. If you keep Millenniumize around as you go through your turn, when World Sea Dragon Zealantis resummons it, it will be able to use its effect again, and it will no longer be affected by Instant Fusion Self-Destruct. You'll be able to attack with it, or later in the turn, it can serve as one of the Link Materials for Crow Sheep. As explained earlier, that will free up a Crystal Beast, or guarantee that you can keep your attack prevention for when you next climb up to Bow of the Goddess. It's also compatible with Valence World. If you gobble up the opponent's Ash Blossom, put it in the zone next to it so you can move that up, and combine them into more negation. Or maybe you take an opponent's boss monster and now you can summon it for yourself. This is also a valid target for level seven synchros with Destrudo. Or as one more way out of a bad hand, if you are stuck with a level three crystal beast which cannot tune with revolution synchron, Use Millennium Eyes to get that 7th star and go off, queen! Here are some pro tips about Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. If you are using Golden Rule and Ruby getting negated could potentially end your turn, place Rainbow as one of the crystals. That way, even if Ruby gets negated, you'll still be able to use its effect to banish it to get another summon and get a Rainbow Dragon, which could maybe lead into Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates. You can keep going now. If Ruby doesn't get negated and you end up summoning that Rainbow Dragon, it's a wild card that's going to substitute for one of your regular seven colors of the rainbow, so just remember to leave one of these in the deck. It's actually for the best that you use rainbow as one of your seven crystals, because that way it'll be much easier to use its effect again on the next turn. So turn one, you can get your first rainbow dragon, and on turn two, you can get your second rainbow dragon. You do have two rainbow dragons, right? I have seen so many Crystal Beast players lament that they bricked because they opened with their only copy of Rainbow Dragon, and so they were not able to use Rainbow's summon effect. It's even happened to me when I've sided it out, like it's land in a magic deck. Don't let it happen to you. And don't let Lullaby of Obedience snipe the only copy out of your deck. And if Ash Blossom stops your rainbow and now you need to hard draw into this thing, running two copies is going to make that twice as likely to happen for you. It also makes for a perfect link material when you get to the crow sheep stage of your wombo combo. And I have won a not insignificant number of duels by attacking with double rainbows. And you get to shout double rainbow at tournaments. Why else would you run crystal beasts? You know Rainbow Bridge of the Heart as the card that makes control decks work. It plays quite differently here, and in yet different ways from how it plays in Sapphire Surprise. First off, try to play through its extra normal summon and its search effects early on, so that you'll be able to bounce it back to the hand before summoning Skulldred. Now that it's back in your hand and you're not going to be needing this anymore, you can return it to eat the cost for Skulldred. If you're going first and the opponent does not have a card, Again, you can give them one, and now you've got two cards in your hand for Skull Dread. Or, if you want to be ultra spicy, you can play Dinotherium, which can special summon a Crystal Beast from your graveyard to the opponent's field, and you can snatch that back too. Or even if you don't, when you go into World Sea Dragon Zealantis, it will be summoned back on your side of the field. This is also an alternate search target for Shield Bearer, which is extra copies of Sapphire. Once this is bounced, you can also use it to eat various other discard effects, like Dragon Ravine. Yeah. You have to be extra careful with it in this kind of deck because it's going to block you from using the fifth effect of Rainbow Ruins. So if you want to get that lockdown and you want to get that fifth summon for extra swarms and also just making that end goal easier to build, you're going to have to find some way to get Rainbow Bridge of the Heart out of this zone. I have summoned Tornado Dragon just to destroy my own heart and then get linked away. Just like my exes.
Critically, do not use Awakening to search for Bridge. Not unless you're going second and you really need its bounce effect. This deck's plays come from many spells which are limited to one use per turn. Don't burn one of those spells as simply a bridge to another search. Even if you don't have Heart now, you might draw it later, so keep it live in the deck. Here's how I think of it during a tournament. If I have a lousy hand, I could simply pass on Dweller, but that probably won't be enough to survive the round. Or I could scrounge up the materials for one of these and a prayer. If I draw any one of these cards, I can combo off and probably complete the whole lockdown. These look like nice odds, so I'll go for it. But what if I had to use Bond to get here? Well, I can't use the other copies. So now that's three fewer draws that can get me out of this situation. Maybe I also used goods into salvation? If I used awakening to get bridge, well now my odds are looking pretty grim. I've lost all of these potential outs to the situation, I no longer have good enough odds, I will probably just pass on Dweller. Each spell is a potential play and a potential way out. Don't burn through them. Now we put it all together! Between your field searchers and a buttload of draws, you will most likely find the city at some point. It can be live early if you, for example, use Crystal Bond to search for Ruby and place some crystal. Then you use Golden Rule to place two more and summon Ruby. In this moment, if your opponent uses Infinite Impermanence, you will have three crystals, so you can tribute Ruby to negate that. Move up your crystals, keep on going with your combo. And I'm going to teach you how to use this to set up lockdowns. Which will get stronger the more crystals you're able to gather. Because once you have three in the back row, every crystal beast in the front row becomes another spell or trap negate. So after you have reached your initial link four, it is time to look at what resources you've got and evaluate how many more crystals you're going to need to reach the lockdown. To visualize this, let's say that I've just used standard golden rule combo to summon Saryuja Skull Dread. These are the only relevant draws I've got. Valence World and this stuff. So in order for me to get Rainbow Ruin set up, I'm going to have to find that field spell and summon Sapphire five times to fill up all of these zones. I'll use Skull Dread to summon Sapphire once, get a first crystal, Use Valence World to move that up, place another. Tag out Skull Dread for World Sea Dragon Zelantis. Banish everyone, summon them back, triggering the Sapphires twice more. I need two more Sapphires, so I can overlay for Dugaris, detach, get this here, and now I can start refilling my zones. At this point, I'll be able to Link Summon Crowsheep and go into that combo. So now Crowsheep triggers. Instead of summoning a Ruby, I'll summon Sapphire, and then Sapphire can place a Ruby. Now let's say at any point during this, you played Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates to go through Salvation, get you some Crystal Beasts you don't need, and Rainbow Ruins. You could take an extra draw off of Rainbow Ruins, and then you can make your Bow of the Goddess here, and then use the fifth effect of Rainbow Ruins to Special Summon Ruby, who will Special Summon more, and then Sapphire is going to place another Crystal. But whoops! That puts you under three crystals, so we would actually have to rewind here. You'd see that you can't summon Apollo, or that will empty out your monster zones, causing Ruby to move up too many crystals. So you actually will have to use the summon effect here. Ruby can move something else up, you get a crystal, and then you can make Bow of the Goddess here. So what you end up with is... You've got your three monster negates and your battle protection, and then you've got two spell and trap negates on top of that. However, I'm going to show you why you should hold off on using Awakening of the Crystal Ultimate until you absolutely have to. Because if you can save it until your Rainbow Dragon is on the field instead of just in your hand, you'll be able to access both of its effects at the same time. So let's rewind and I will show you what this alternate timeline can achieve. Let's see what happens if we hold off on using Awakening. Use Saryuja to summon Sapphire, grab another one back from the graveyard, use the Valence World to move it up, get a crystal, tag out for Zealantis, banish everyone, resummon them, triggering two more Sapphires, and that completes the rainbow. Overlay for Dugaris. I put it up here so it's not in the way of the main monster zones. Detach, bring back Sapphire, and get another crystal. Now at this point, we can use the two Sapphires, make sheep. We don't need to use the Awakening, so we're gonna save it until now that we've summoned Rainbow Dragon, we can play it here. So you get the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, and you get to summon. 
So Rainbow Bridge of Salvation is going to get us another Crystal Beast and a Field Spell, and Path of Sapphire get us this. So now we're at this point. You can get an extra draw if you want it. We can tag out the Rainbow Dragon for Rainbow Over Dragon, and then move up, let's say, just the Sapphire, and you, you can place another one if you want. These will make Bow of the Goddess with three materials, and then use the fifth effect of Rainbow Ruins to move this up, move these up, triggering Sapphire, getting you back to three crystals. So now, you've got two more spell negates on top of this, and you could also go for an Abyss Dweller. This is the power of waiting on that Awakening. Your opponent is probably not breaking through a seven negate board. You'll need to visualize this very carefully. For example, let's say we're at the point in the combo where you have just summoned Overdragon, Crow Sheep summons Ruby, and now Ruby will special summon as many Crystal Beasts as possible. Summoned Sapphires will trigger, refilling their zones, but the vanilla crystals will leave their zones empty. At this time, you should have three monster zones occupied by Overdragon, by Zealantis, and by the Ruby, which has just been summoned. If summoning as many crystals as possible would leave you going under three, then you may need to find some way to fill up one of these zones so that Ruby will only move up one crystal, just a safe sapphire which replaces itself. And keep in mind also that after this point, you will be condensing some of them into Bow of the Goddess. Both halves of your board are getting jumbled here, and you need to know where they're both ending up. Let's say you are not able to field another crystal, but you still want to get that Ruby Swarm. If you haven't used it already, you could play Dugary's the Timeless, which will resummon one of those sapphires and get you that crystal back, and now you can use these to make your Bow of the Goddess. However, keep in mind that this will skip your next main phase one, which is typically when you would be bringing out Overdrive for the kill. Now, most opponents, when they see your seven negate board, are going to surrender, so you're never going to make it to the point where you actually summon Overdrive. But sometimes they might stick around. Do think ahead about how many negates a Dugary's summon play is going to end on, because if you only end on let's say, one spell negate, is that going to be enough to keep your opponent pinned down for potentially an extra round? Now, you could get around this by summoning Overdrive a turn early, hoping it survives the opponent's turn, but you do not want to lose this to a Kaiju, to Forbidden Droplet, or to Typhon, who is everywhere these days. Don't be like me and get jump-scared by Typhon in the last round of a big tournament. I recommend just playing dozens of games solitaire until you start getting Tetris vision with these crystals. And eventually, you'll be able to look at your opening hand and see those literal 40 steps ahead. All right, I'm very tired. If you're still watching, you are too. I'm gonna have to leave the advanced Crystal Beast stuff and the side deck smoke screening for another day, the Testina engine, plus I want to ramble about my weird Noble Knight combos, because I do this stuff with Noble Knights too. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any more of my monthly Yu-Gi-Oh's. So if you've watched this far into the video, this is what I've been watching. This is my setup here. Uh, to get a camera pointing down at the dual field, I had to build a bridge counter to the supports of the tripod here, and I used Disney Lorcana decks as counterweights. <laughs> like and subscribe, bye!